You don't need to shout even though you're doing a speech. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm Lula. You have to have conviction and power you're in your voice. Damn right. If good. you're not yelling in the speech, are you even really giving one? What we'll a United Consonant, and then after that, we'll continue to work on our development schemes here. All right, uh, Dilma Rousseff, I'm thinking that we uh, use our political power to continue to bolster the economy by going into fast growth. Uh, Cardoza was, still did want us to pursue that until such time as the PT party gets power. Are you opposed to this? No opposition from the Workers' Party. I would assume so. And at the same time, now that we have a, a bit of a booming economy here, I think we should consider perhaps... Uh, diverting some governmental funds to the uh, pursuance of a PT election and a PT win. What do you think about that? Ooh, yes. Of course, hey. I'm in. Yeah. Mm, okay, wonderful. Let's go and do that then. Mr. Lula, uh, as I said, uh, I'm a diplomat. Uh, I have to sign as a diplomat over here. Um, the president is wondering when will the talks between UNASU and the African Union be will begin? Have we heard anything back from them? We approached them about cooperation. They said they needed to vote. After which I heard uh, absolutely I, nothing. Neither have I. Dilma, um, would you like to make a trip over there and see what the situation is? Uh, doing their vote right now. They're doing their vote? Okay, wonderful. Yeah, yeah taking longer than... Okay. Uh, yeah. Dilma, let's, let's discuss something really briefly. After that uh, last expansion we did on the vote in Congress, we have give, been given access to several major development projects. If you would like to look through the decisions tab, you will find those down there. Uh, what do you think we should prioritize first? We do have access to some political power we just received for uh, some of the land appropriations we just did uh, in our economy. So what do you think we should be prioritizing here? Um... You're looking at the major development projects, right? Mm-hmm. Right, I'll be returning to Buenos Aires. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. I, I suggest that we develop the Amazon. I'm thinking so, too. The interior has been ignored for quite a while. And in order to shore up, frankly, support for the PT Workers' Party, if uh, we were to spearhead this project, it could help us carry some very important districts. Was that all from uh, the African Union, though, regarding that yeah. deal? Also, I wasn't uh, I wasn't here for the beginning. Did the did the vote for cooperation between the UNA, SUL, and the African Union uh, didn't get decided? So we, we there might have been a miscommunication. I talked to uh, I think this is your representative to uh, to hash yes. out more exactly what you mean by uh, uh, by cooperation. If it, you guys are just extending a helping hand and talking about helping hand, uh, but in addition, we we were hoping to get basically yeah, a, a mutual good statement, relations. good relation, and, and a mutual statement for the respect of our own internal sovereignty in our own areas of the world and a commitment to basically help uh, expand the economic and political power of our own institutions working working in lockstep. Because I think we are both gonna try and build similar organizations within our own areas of the world. And I think by looking to each other for what we do and providing mutual aid in whatever manner it will take, as well as just the general statements of the world, would go a long way for making many nations in Africa, South America, and foreigners respect what we're doing and be willing to pursue it to the fullest. So you're looking for a, a public statement of close cooperation? Correct, yes. And, uh, okay, so when you talk about sovereignty and your own personal uh, regional influence, are you talking about your own sovereignty or the sovereignty of South American countries? South American countries. Uh, so we are want... we're speaking for the UNASUL, which is the equivalent there of more or less of the African Union, UNASUL. Yeah. Okay. And so you guys are looking to replicate our our declaration of uh, African sovereignty and, and no outside intervention. Okay. Correct. Yes. All right. Um, yeah. Seeing as that mirrors our uh, uh, you know our ideology and our beliefs, we can uh, uh, we can support that. However, okay. Uh, if for any reason, and I, I'm not I'm not specific I'm not specifically saying anything because this will be down to a vote. For any reason, uh, situations become too. Uh, how do I put this? Tumultuous, too uh, risque inside the southern uh, southern hemisphere, which it's not at all right now. Mm -hmm. If it becomes uh, a bit of a problem, you know, this is not a permanent uh, 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 statement of support, right? Understand. I, I don't imagine you guys are going to do anything anything crazy down there, so long as you know the freedom of your countries and the freedom of your people and the prosperity of your people is of your utmost. I, I assume you have no problems with uh, ideologies such as democratic socialism. Uh, in Brazil nope. or something like that. In that case, no. As far as I'm aware, there will be no extreme politics. If Brazil or any other of the uh, UNICEF nations see anything like that, we will attempt to deal with it internally, of course, but we are committed the to African... democratic sovereignty. 
the, the African Union has no uh, no political affiliations whatsoever. Each no. country is allowed to have their own. Yeah, each country is allowed to go their own way. Very we well. simply unite under the uh, or the or under the commonality of let me pick my fucking country here. Shit, under the commonality of uh, being African and our you know our past histories and our and our troubles. So we're just looking, we're looking after each other and ourselves by extension through that. That makes uh, sense. I will talk to them and uh, I'll see what their uh, what their understanding is for a uh, public. Uh, public decree of uh, of cooperation very well as soon as you uh have an answer on that let us know and we will put together one as well yeah when uh, when it's possible i'll come back and talk to you about the uh, uh the investments in uh, and spotting for uh conference. sounds good thank you for your time no problem argentina i'm sure you heard most of that uh yes yeah, so i believe that the finally the african union is going to be making a deal with Nassau. Or are it we appears just... that there will be a deal of sorts, but not a Something's being one. worked out, but the details haven't yeah. been decided on. African it's Union, a it's very decentralized in terms of their power, and so there's a lot of different opinions, so we'll have to see. Uh, I think yeah. I think negotiations with the African Union will be very slow, at the very uh, least. Yeah. All right, this is a emergency United Nations meeting called, it will act as our regular United Nations meeting, but it'll also deal, be dealing with the situation. 9-11. Uh, before anyone else speaks, I'd like to invite the United States to speak if they want to. So if you want to go ahead and talk, you can. We acknowledge the representative from the USA. You should be able to come speak. Yes. So um, greetings, members of the United Nations. So today, uh, the World Trade Center was uh, attacked by foreign terrorists on our own soil. And... Uh, we would like to just to, to, to formally uh, speak about this. So this so such an action is not uh, acceptable and uh, we will be finding uh, whoever is responsible to this and we will make sure that such uh, terrorist actions are not uh, are no longer uh, an acceptable uh, part of this world. We will uh, invite uh, nations to cooperate uh, with us if they would like to um, to join us in this mission to uh, to purge uh, terrorism uh, from this world. And uh, that is all we have to say officially for now. We invite the delegate from Iraq to speak. Hello, um, dear leaders um, from the United Nations. Today, I want to talk about the situation that's happening in Palestine and Israel. As you know, we talked to the United States, and my condolences to the United States. Um, we talked to them, and they don't want to remove the guarantee independence from, the is from Israel, as they said. And my um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, he's, uh, he heard. The United States saying that they don't want to remove the guarantee independence from Israel because of lack of influence that they will have in the region. And part of the deal was to me, Iraq, and Egypt to put guarantee independence on Israel and bring them under our wing as a Middle Eastern, um, a Middle Eastern country. Dear leaders, we encourage you to um, continue having peace and in, in our region and to talk to the United States about the situation because it's, it's, not, it's unacceptable what's happening right now in Europe and the Middle East, in Russia, in Georgia, in uh, Azerbaijan, in South America, in Asia. Thank you very much, um, Chairman. That was my speech. Thank you for your my time. To the USA. The UN acknowledges the delegate from Ethiopia. Yeah. Um... We first of all want to wish, uh, uh, want to send our condolences to the United States and all those countries who have lost citizens in the terrible tragedy that has befallen the world. Um, this event shows that clearly not enough action is being taken against terrorism all around the world. And we, as a country that has been experiencing um, insurgency and terrorism, uh, from Eritreans uh, can share in the plight of the US and therefore I want to encourage all nations to cooperate further in counter-insurgency, counter-terrorism 
in ed educating their pop uh, populations and creating a more equitable and fair world where things like these do not arise. Thank you. Thank you. The United Nations acknowledges the delegate from Argentina. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I stand here today with sadness and disappointment and I'm here to express the, the feeling of me and the people of Argentina. As we saw the horrible scenes coming straight from New York, I never want to see this ever again. Argentina will take a harsh, stan harsh stance against terrorism to make sure this never happens again. As I saw from my office, the horrible and horrible scenes, I, 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 was, I was touched by my heart. I send condolences to the United States and to the families affected of this attack. And Argentina will declare war on any country that supports this type of act. Any, any, act of any type of act of jihadism will be declared enemy from the people of Argentina and the Republic of Argentina. And I, and I get all my brothers here today that we all take the same stance against terrorism to prevent this from ever happening again. Thank you very much. Hello, Mr. Newspaper. Hello. Oh. I was going to finally ask about the formation of uh, Unasol, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Unasol, yeah. Uh, Dilma, would you like to speak on it? Um, I'll, I'll let you take this one. All right, you know well. a little bit more than I In do. In that case, uh, for, for a very long time, many of the nations here have begun as colonial states out of Europe. And in the recent last hundred years with the superpower status of the United States, we have, for the most part, been frankly very underdeveloped and if not entirely extracted from. And it is the position of most South American governments, including the one in Brasilia, that we do need to build something that would protect our own economic and political interests. We are inspired by seeing the success for the most part in the European Union and for the recent attempts of the African Union to build something similar. The modern world is one where nation status is no longer the end to national power and to collective human organization. It is important that broader coalitions of nation states can be formed in different localities throughout the world in order to work together. So recently we did formally sign the expansion of the political and economic rights and responsibilities and commitment of UNISOL. And through it, we hope to build an independent, cooperative South American Union through which we can grow and build together. All right. Is UNISOL exclusive to democracies? We, it is. You must have independent elections and you must, uh, at the very least, be committed to democratizing your nation. So yes, it is very much democratic. I know we differ a little bit in that regard from, for example, the African Union as far as I'm aware. Have you made any attempts yet to align any countries to UNISOL? As of right now, as far as I am aware, uh, we, we have not made any formal uh, proposals for it yet. Yeah, it's still more of a political treaty. In the coming years, uh, we will attempt to do that. To be quite frank, on a personal note, I am, of course, Lula da Silva. And uh, Cardoza is not a man who wishes to, to push this too far. But he's also aware that in the upcoming election, he will almost certainly be ousted from power. And uh, as such, the Brazilian government has not made an attempt to really actively pursue a unified UNISOL until such time as the Brazilian elections can be decided and the Workers' Party can take over and continue to expand the power and commitment of UNISOL. A... Uh, okay, real quick. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this Yugoslavia and Serbian war going on? The civil war in Yugoslavia and Serbia. We recently saw that happening. Uh, we are glad to see the nationalist government uh, be overthrown, but we do not obviously seek any sort of civil conflict on any part of the planet. All it does is hurt the working class and makes them poor and makes them suffer more. So we are sad to see it happening, but at the same time, it does appear to be for a good cause. All right, thank you for your time. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, uh, so we have a lot of political power. What do you think we should do with that? Because we do have actually quite a lot of it currently. Uh, are we able to lower our corruption? Uh, on that note, um, from we, we could, but like out of roleplay, the best way to do that is to just completely get like political power maxed out. And I think we should oh. probably prioritize a few other things first. Yeah. 
for example, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. There's, there's two paths as far as I see it. One, we could further raise taxes and use that to offset the deficit we'd have acquired in our foreign investment schemes for mutual economic aid. Or alternatively, we could do a public outlook um, campaign to try and increase education spending. Which one benefits us more in the long term? We do have to start thinking about the election, to be honest. Yeah. It is upcoming very soon. It wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to increase taxes. If we're going to be quite frank, that will hurt popularity of Cardozo's government. He's not running yeah. for a re-election, I believe, but he, he has said himself that he's willing to add more taxes to bolster the economy and pay off the debts. So I think that we should have a it would benefit the country and benefit the party. Goal of 30 percent tax. I'd say. I agree. Let's do it. Let's uh, continue to develop industry. Keep going on Rio. We need to get Brazilians working again. Our GDP per capita is still an embarrassing 10,000. We are a poor yeah. nation. And the way forward, although resource extraction will certainly help, will be primarily through giving Brazilians, hardworking Brazilians, good jobs that will give them the income needed to boost Brazil into a developed country. Truly, by definition. Yeah, double the factories. We do. My parliament has authorized the uh, actual use of uh, a parliamentary budget uh, so we could start making new projects, military actually. We're building a higher military for a bigger military industry to defend against terrorism. That's understandable. The Brazilian military is already quite strong and I think our, our projection capabilities are such that we will be able to wage a war on terror whether it will be found and uh, Dilma, that's something I actually want to bring up to you. With the new war on terror internationally, I think this would be a very opportune moment to potentially, let's let's keep this very behind closed doors here because it could create some problems internally, yeah. but uh, start to declare some of the drug organizations in our country as terrorist organizations and pursue them as such, perhaps even with the backing of the United States. I know that Clinton earlier, I saw that he was committing to the war on drugs. So if we could discuss it with the Americans, and declare these organizations terrorists, we would be able to get perhaps more funding and backing from the American government, as well as more, uh, I think, national commitment in Brazil itself to get rid of these organizations. Obviously, it is mutually beneficial for all Brazilians if the cartel is ridden from our lands. So I, I agree, whether it's behind closed doors or not. Wonderful. I will be behind you. Let's I think that'll down. be uh, something that we pursue for the United States next, se next session. We'll go talk because I think we have like 17 minutes left here. Yeah. It's kind of the tail end here. I think at this point, Doma, I mean, I've already been giving them, but I think I'm going to go more heavily onto the campaign trail. So I'm going to leave most of the governmental decision making to you while I go and campaign for the presidency. Uh, it is pinnacle that we do not allow the Cardoza neoliberals to stay in power and that the working class in Brazil truly lead this country. We already have been, I suppose, with our shadow government, but it's important that the working class understand that the government does truly represent them and not the neoliberal interests of the Cardoza government. Indeed, and that we are not fake workers like the capitalists in the United States. Absolutely. Pretend to understand the hardships of the regular worker, but exactly. sit happily yes. in their office, their executive office. There will be Pocketing radical change in Brazil money. and radical change in South America. I just hope that if we can get a working relationship with Bill Clinton, he's a reasonable man. I know him and Cardozo were friends, though, so I hope that doesn't hurt us when we take power. But I am sure he'll understand Brazil's commitment to a sovereign, unisil South America. And as long as we pursue anti-drug policy, I think that we should be able to work with him. At least I would hope. Agreed. Should we perhaps talk to the Clinton administration about the declaration of... We have a little bit of time. Let's see if he's busy. Mr. Clinton, do you have a very brief moment, sir? Uh, yes, yes, we have a moment. Uh, to start with, we'd like to say that we will fully back you in all anti-terrorist operations you pursue after 9-11. You have the full support and commitment of the Brazilian people for whatever action you feel necessary to take. And whatever you require of us, you simply need to ask. That's very good. We're very happy to hear this, and uh, we'll definitely be contacting you whenever um, Wonderful. You know, we decide to do anything. On a similar matter, I'm sure you are aware that there are upcoming elections in Brazil, 
And as of right now, it does look like the workers party under me, Lula, De Silva will take power. I'd like to say to start that I think that we could work very closely together. One of the first things I plan on pursuing in the new administration is a similar, I suppose, war on drugs to what you have already committed to in the United States. We do uh, plan on declaring all drug producers uh, as terrorist organizations in Brazil and to pursue them militarily wherever they can be found, as well as in cooperation with hopefully the Colombian governments and the Argentinian governments. Uh, yeah, that sounds like uh, like a good idea. We can definitely do that. Absolutely. So we would hope that we would re receive uh, military support or uh, intelligence support from uh, United States services in able to hunt down these drug organizations and have them dealt with to the fullest ability of the Brazilian and American governments. Yes. So uh, towards this goal, we would uh, we would appreciate if we could uh, have military bases in your country to um, to further be able to assist. Uh, this would be military. this would be reasonable. All right. Good. And on that note, uh, if if the American government could find it in its own budget to send us excess funds to be able to expand our intelligence services in Brazil and to go after these drug cartels, obviously we do not expect it. But if the vast resources of the U.S. federal government could be used in a more direct approach to deal with the drug cartels in Brazil and in lieu of that in the Colombian Venezuelan jungles, it would be absolutely massive towards helping us pursue this end goal so that we can stop the drug trafficking and drug trade out of South America through Latin America and the United States. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I would be able to commit uh, resources directly towards this uh i understand so, i understand yeah. but we, we simply wish to ask we have recovered from our recession our economy is back on track but we do still have a debt crisis and we do still have yeah. a lot of work to do in that regards but that's fine we are still completely well, committed to the anti-drug uh policy of this government so thank you for your time mr clinton is there anything you wish to discuss with uh, brazil um i don't think so for now uh i think i think it's everything is good all right thank you for your time mr clinton have a good day. No problem. Thank you very much for uh, approaching us about the uh, the help. Absolutely. And uh, representative of the Union, South Africa. Hello. Hello there. Uh, well, I want to start off in a somber note. Uh, I want to extend my apologies for, you know, being inefficient in my duties. I uh, I did not bring up uh, the African Union solidarity with uh, with Unisol in the last UN meeting. But of course, there was a uh, emergency meeting. It was, and indeed. there were uh, very pressing issues on on the table. Uh, oh, yeah. However, I want you to know that that will not be forgotten. A press release will be released, um, most likely by the uh, by the next UN meeting, as well as we will make that we will put that on the docket to express our solidarity with uh, with the two organizations. Wonderful. The same with us. The issues in the United Nations meeting were too pressing to not focus on entirely, but uh, we will have something written up and make a formal statement uh, shortly as to our uh, cooperation together. We're finishing up some public investiture, and when we're done with that, we are going to probably expand into Mercosur, and from there, do some deals with the African Union. Speaking of which, Donna Brazil, would yes. you like to go to uh, Pretoria and discuss things with Mr. Mbiki as to closer ties with the African Union and... Uh, the public investiture project that we've been talking about doing with them. Yes, I'd love to. Let me Wonderful. Thank you. Buy my plane ticket online real quick. Uh, I will head over there myself uh, as sure as, as I'm certain that the game is running correctly here. France does have a border with us. That's true. Oh, what's up, guys? How's it going? What's up, Nanto? What's up, Sulkin? How's it going, everyone else? Good to see you. All right, Doma. I am going to go on a speaking tour around Brazil now because the election, as you know, is about to happen in literally a month here. We have to hope for the best. Polls do suggest that the Workers' Party is in the lead, just barely, so it'll be a very close election. From Argentina. Ah, hello. Welcome to Brasilia. Take a seat. Good to have you here, as always. Thank you. Uh, so, we, we've been wondering, since when is a deal between the UNASO and the African Union going to happen? We currently discuss things with Mr. Mbiki, the uh, spokesperson for the African Union. Obviously, they need to convene a council of the African Union and they will vote on such a matter. But we have offered them a very competitive, extensive economic investiture package, which you can see if you look on Brazil's focus tree, go to the far left and look at Align Africa. So we have offered them, I think, a very competitive uh, situation. 
The expansion of uh, cooperation between the African Union and UNISO would result in a large public investiture campaign from both sides, including in Brazil and Argentina. So you would probably find your own economy very heavily bolstered by such a deal. So we will find out what they vote on that shortly, I hope. I assume we have the full backing of Argentina and the La Rua government. Mm, all right, the president's been wondering for a long time since is, when is this deal going to break out because he says that this is the most bureaucratic deal he has seen in his whole entire life. The most what kind of deal? Most bureaucratic deal. It is very ever. bureaucratic. It is very bureaucratic, but it is also a prosperous one. It would give our nations access to capital markets we don't currently have and will f get us off the reliance on the United States and Europe for mutual trade and investiture. We can wait ourselves off the teat of the IMF. Yes, yes. Well, the president will be visiting Brazil very shortly, but he has some problems to deal with the populace. I, I hope so, that his uh, sickness has uh, has not done him under. I hope that he's doing much better from that. Oh, so we'll keep you updated as long as we can. Be rest assured, we will keep you updated. All right, we are forming a coalition currently, and we should yes. be able to form a government. Wonderful! Today All right. is a great day for South America. And for Brazil, the Cardoza government and the neoliberals who have plagued this nation for years, despite their concessions towards the PT party, are finally gone and ousted. I, Lula da Silva, will preside over a new era for South America and Brazil. No longer will we prioritize private business and the oligarchs who have controlled this nation for decades after the fall of the military government. It is a new beginning for the regular worker, the regular South American, the regular Brazilian. Our government will be committed to prioritizing South American development domestically without the dangerous influence that comes with the Europeans and the IMF. We will prioritize investiture with the African Union and with our fellow UNISOL member states and together we will rise to the challenges that modern South America face. A commitment to the worker is a commitment to South America, and we stand united, and we stand ready. Now that we are firmly in power, we are going to work on trying to deal with the drug cartels. Last time around, we did make a statement of commitment to Mr. Clinton and the Americas that we would go after all these drug organizations that do plague Brazil, as well as Central America, and of course the Americans themselves. So one of our chief priorities in the early years of the Lula administration are going to be dealing with the drug cartels, which of course would be huge for us since drug cartels do have absolutely massive ramifications on our own country's internal stability. So we they will work to deal with them. They are. They are really bad. Political power gain reduction, population reduction, stability reduction, all that. Uh, my apologies for the delay. Um, I come bearing news, and unfortunately, it is bad news. Mm -hmm. The uh, has not unanimously passed for uh, exclusive economic uh, prioritization between uh, between our two organizations. Wow. However, okay. uh, I do want to say that that is on uh, that is just based off one negative vote. We do require unanimous voting for, uh, for any policies that affect all African uh, African Union members. Understandable. Uh, if you guys have any. Uh, um, investment that you want to have between african countries on a one-to-one -one scale Ma the majority of countries are uh, one-to-one -one scale investing is absolutely on the table but we will say our, our big public investiture package we would obviously only do with a, a commitment between the african union and unisol so that'll be tabled but one for one investment we absolutely can do so anything you want to propose we would uh we would love to work out the details on that um back into rp south africa can i ask who was the one opposed vote uh currently nigeria has uh, economic deals with uh, with the east and the west and they are not looking to prioritize their uh, their fuel exports as well as their incoming trade with any other countries that oh, violate their, really their after the mutual deals. investment we did with nigeria that is surprising okay yeah he, he did he was aware of the economic package and what would it, it would entail correct yeah it was established as a uh, a prioritization deal between uh, trade and, uh, and economic investment. There was no exclusivity uh, uh, um, mentioned in the deal. It was primarily a, uh, uh, we would look to uh, UNISOL first for our trade deals and then uh, move on afterwards, as well as mm -hmm. uh, looking to UNISOL first for our investment deals before moving on afterwards.
All right, Dilma, uh, I say that we immediately go on a diplomatic mission to Nigeria and discuss things with their president, Mr. Buhari. Let's go find where he is. It's a pinnacle of importance. I am really shocked that that was shot down. There he is. Really? Hello there, Mr. Buhari? Yes, welcome. You are, you are speaking with uh, Mr. Lula and Dilma is on the way. Uh, we, we came here to discuss the situation with the uh, economic investiture deal and mutual economic pact between the African Union and UNISIL, which from our understanding, uh, Nigeria was opposed to. So we simply came here to discuss the uh, situation and the prospect of uh, potentially uh, reevaluating that priority with Nigeria. Yes, the, um, I saw the economic um, argument is to prioritize the deal with the South America and Africa. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, it would put possibly put back the like toss up the investment and, and deals I already have with some uh, European countries. We we are not intending to have a mutual uh, exclusive uh, trade investment zone. That's not what we're trying to create here. The intent of Unisol is not to cut off the African Union from foreign markets and foreign investiture. Rather, it is simply an attempt to create lasting economic deals and partnerships between Africa and South America and uh, a commitment to prioritizing our own economics over that of Europe and North America, which typically have not looked after our countries and uh, each other. So we're not attempting to make a deal that would cut you off from Chinese investment, European or American investment. Rather, we are simply trying to make a deeper economic ties between our continents and a commitment to prioritizing each other's own domestic trade markets, but not cutting off from European and uh, Asian ones. So let me make that very clear to start off with. So you would be by no means barred from trading outside of the uh, Unisil and African zone, of course. It, we would simply ask that you always first seek to trade with us if you choose not to and you get a better deal by all means go for it but we do think that our own uh our own markets are very competitive and we're confident in our ability to compete on that basis alone uh this is a matter that um i shall leave with my um out of rp if you take a look at the brazilian focus tree and go to the far left you'll see some of the many benefits that you would receive in such an arrangement. The expansion of Unisil's economic zone and aligning with Africa would uh, allow African Union member states to receive uh, extensive population research and uh, economic bonuses. And we, with the further um, thinking, I think the Nigerian people would love this um, idea as much as the government in charge will further think of it. Wonderful. Obviously, you don't need to make a deal now, but uh, do let us know. In order to sweeten the deal, we would also be willing to offer you another extensive mutual investment scheme between Brazil and Nigeria, one-to-one -one basis, of course, uh, as extensive as you would like. So if you're interested in reevaluating the deal and rehaving a new vote with the African Union and signing a new uh, investiture deal with Brazil, simply let us know and we will, we would love to work that out with you. Um, African Union's members about that and some, either me or someone else will come back to you soon. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Buhari. We hope that we can work something out in the future. Thank you for your time. You have a good flight back to uh, Brazil. Leo. Thank you very much. In the meantime, we have uh, instituted reforms in the Congress of Brazil. We have passed funding for higher education. So every Brazilian will have access to free education, in higher uh, university. And we have passed extensive universal health care coverage of which the quality could be better. But we will work on that as our economy grows. Mercosul or Mercosul was a customs and political pact signed in the early 90s by Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay. Later, the rest of South America became associate members of Mercosur. The organization is a worthwhile organization to bring needed prosperity and unity to South America. So they gave us a little bit of a political power reduction, monthly population gain, and tax cost reduction, which does result in us making more money off of tax increases. So quite nice.
The big thing that does come to mind now is the issue of corruption and drug trade. Obviously, we are going to prioritize aligning with Africa and doing the initial parts of our public spending in Africa. But when we are done with that, we will reshift policy entirely back towards dealing with the drug cartels, which we need to deal with. And since we're dealing with the drug cartels, it makes sense that we will do a public corruption campaign. In order to do that, I think the Lula government is going to focus for the next probably around six months to build up extensive political power and political support in the Brazilian Congress to be able to start to tackle corruption. All right, Mr. Quinn, uh, good to be speaking yes, with well. you here in, uh, in DC. Uh, we, absolutely. We, we come here with uh, several several things to discuss. Let's start yes, with I the. That you uh, won the election, by the way. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a victory for the Brazilian people. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, Cardoso has actually moved to the United States as well. I believe he's teaching at a. Uh, uh, Rutgers again, so our old president is in your country now. Yes, but anyway, uh, we came here firstly to reaffirm our commitment to the war on drugs. And we have uh, begun to start to classify all those many organizations as terrorist groups. And we will be pursuing them under Brazilian law as such. So we wanted to reaffirm our commitment to dealing with the war on drugs and getting rid of the uh, drug cartels in Brazil, as well as in other South American countries. So I want to start off by saying that now that I am formally elected. So that will be of principal concern to us. We're happy to hear that. Absolutely. The other major reason we uh, came here to discuss is, as I'm sure you're aware, Brazil has gone under absolutely transformative, rapid economic development. I, I noticed, yeah. We, we have uh, begun a new era for Brazilian economic development through mutual investiture, primarily with the African Union and other uh, countries. Our economy is absolutely booming. As such, we feel that it is time for Brazil to start to enter the world more as a major power, uh, one concerned with major world events. And so we came here as equals to discuss with the United States the situation that happened in Taiwan. And uh, we wanted to get the opinion of the Clinton government and what can be done to secure the sovereignty of democracies in the Pacific. Yeah, so what happened to China was simply a, a deal that we had struck with the Chinese because, you know, what Taiwan had done was completely unacceptable. Absolutely. The war to the Philippines. And so, you know, it's clear that China has, well, the, the, the Communist Party has put a pro, a fairly uh, socialist or communist regime. Yeah, it is the, the in, People's Party. Uh, they share a lot of similarities to the CCP, which is uh, certainly, concerning. Certainly. And I am concerned by it. I, I did tell them that I would rather they not interfere with the politics of the nation but they have they have in store this this uh, person in charge anyways so indeed yep we're kind of over the rubicon in that regard but uh, i, I yeah. feel like we can we can't really go we can't backtrack on the situation in taiwan but it, it is the belief and the opinion of the brazilian government and the brazilian people that the sovereignty of democracies and the upholding of values for the working class throughout the pacific is pinnacle so uh, we, we want to discuss what what steps we can take to ensure that this I doesn't happen again in the pacific yeah, well, about Taiwan itself, I have I have thought about this, and you know, it's a little bit touchy. I think um, it's not something that I can really talk about because we do have some plans to you know do something about it, but obviously it is a bit uh, confidential, so I, I won't be able to talk about that. But. Understandable. Well, let, let me make another thing very clear. Brazil is uh, planning now uh, developing a world class navy. Obviously, we do not wish to contend with, uh, it, with the U.S. I mean, you you obviously will always outspend us and always be the major power of the Americas. But in order to exert uh, uh, military power projection capabilities against any nation which would seek to destroy democracies, we will be expanding our Navy. So we want to make you aware of that. So it does not come as a surprise. That's very good. I mean, I do see that your, uh, your economy is very strong right now, but it of is. course your, uh, your military capabilities, you know, you, you could... Uh, we, we, we are not lacking, I would say, but Brazil is not the military and naval power that it, it can and will be. So we want to make our commitment in that regard very clear. And as such, we just like to make it very clear that there will be another major power in the Americas with naval and military capabilities able to deal with uh, any governmental changes or any crises we have ideologically in the Americas. So we want to make that very clear. And we just like to hope that the United States now understands that Brazil is a major power and we hope that we will be consulted on South America and Central American matters and that uh, we are not surprised by anything which has happened in the past. We understand why 
but uh, yeah, we, yeah. We, we hope that we'll be consulted in the future. We understand yeah. your position completely, yes. May I interrupt just really quick? As Absolutely. we are all members of the UN here, currently present, uh, I want to bring it to the attention of at least the United Kingdom and the Americans that Turkey is justifying on the Kurds in Iraq. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, they are also a member of NATO, Turkey. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to deal with that separately. Yeah, you might, uh, America, it, we could we could continue these talks later if you want to go talk to Erdogan. Sure, all right, I'll <laughs> yeah, do that. Absolutely. All right, Dilma, we've, we've been very busy for a little while here, but I think it's a good time for us to go ahead and reevaluate our situation, what we need to prioritize. Agreed. Look at the domestic situation a little more. Indeed. Uh, the, most of our parties have been on our anti-corruption campaigns, which have gone very, very well. It was one of the principal campaign promises of us and our party that we would start to deal with the corruption which has plagued Brazil, and we have delivered on that promise. The other promise that we made to the people is that we would deal with the terrorist organizations, which we are making moves on. We are starting to gather international support and South American support to start to go after the cartels, which will be a very lengthy and dangerous affair, but we are starting to work on that as well, which is good. Hello. 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 Well, uh, yeah, this is Afghanistan. Uh, I was wondering if any of you would be willing to help fund anti-terrorist operations in Afghanistan and or our aircraft carrier project. Do you, do you well, 100% a... on the anti-terrorist organization, but the aircraft carrier? Do you, have, do you don't have a port, do you, Afghanistan? No, we have a dockyard, dude. We, we have a port. Chi I think Japan and I uh, think also China have been kind enough to find more naval dockyard construction in our country. And, uh, but, but mainly, mainly anti-terrorist operations of being honest. Oh my God, as, there's uh, a, there's a port up there. There is a port. <laughs> what the fuck? Ow! We will, we, at this rate, like once our second naval dockyard's done, it might be sooner, but currently we will have an aircraft carrier by 2019. Wow. Wow, uh, I'm, I'm speechless. On that the account, first country that is landlocked to ever build an aircraft carrier. Yeah, yeah that's a great a achievement, we I guess. A we have a lake, so we're not landlocked. In the Islamic State of Somalia. Have we all saw that? See that before? Oh fuck yeah! I didn't see that. Yeah, you haven't seen that? Whoa, Listen, yeah. whoa, whoa. That's a problem. <laughs> Look at the leader. No that's shit, a fucking that problem. The fuck are you gonna do about um, it? I, I say we put a pit in the Afghanistan situation since there's still a functioning democracy, and we go talk with the African Union about what can be done to deal with the situation in Somalia. Yes, 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 I agree. Well, uh, South Africa, do you have a moment? Uh, me and the United States would like to discuss with the African Union the situation developing in Somalia. Uh, situations. Okay, yeah, uh, meet you in the African Union, Joe. Sounds good. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's full on. Islamic State right there. That's what that is. Uh, all right, Mr. Mbiki, I'm sure you're aware of the situation in Somalia currently. Uh, can you update me on what, spe or what specific... The uh, creation Somalia? of the Islamic oh, State of uh, Somalia. One more time, you got cut out there. Uh, the creation of the Islamic State of Somalia currently. Uh, okay. rad radical uh, Islamic faction has taken over the government and is now uh, maintaining power in Somalia, which is, of course, unacceptable to international security order. Okay. So I, I talked briefly with the U.S. Me and the U.S. are both committed to anti-terror all throughout the world, wherever it may take. We were just having discussions about Afghanistan, but it was brought to our attention that Somalia has declared itself an Islamic uh, nation, Islamic state, which is unacceptable. So obviously I wanted to approach it with you since uh, obviously Brazil does value uh, the African Union sovereignty as a military and economic power. So yeah. would you like to deal with this internally or do you want us to help you with it? Because uh, this obviously does need to be dealt with properly. So what are your demands? What exactly do you want to see? The overthrow of this government and the putting in power of an alternative, optimally a democracy, but frankly, anything other than Islamic State is the goal here. And is there no way to solve this uh, this problem uh, diplomatically? I don't see uh, any situation that was a result in an Islamic uh, terrorist organization giving up power in their own government. If you can make that happen, that'd be an option, but I don't see a pathway on that happening, frankly. Okay. We will uh, we will discuss uh, possible uh, routes to be taken with the with the situation, and we'll okay. get back to you on that. Uh, I, I know that the African Union does tend to go pretty slow, which I respect, but on this one, I would I'll caution you to act as quickly as possible because we do not want this sort of extremism to spread into other parts of Africa or the Middle East, right? So that will be noted. Thank you very All much. Right. Thank you very much. Hello there. 
Mr. <laughs> Quinn, I, I have discussed things with the head of the African Union, and they're discussing how to deal with the Somalian situation. Just heads up. Okay, that's good. Yeah. They didn't tell you anything? They're gonna have to vote on it. All African Union matters require a vote, so they're gonna have to discuss the situation. Uh, I said oh, if they okay. want to deal with it internally and uh, oust that government, that's an option. I also made it clear that Brazil would be happy to interfere, and I'm sure the U.S. would too. I can't speak for you, of course, but since you're committed to anti-terror, you know. Yeah, of course we would be ready to do that. Okay, good. Uh, the PT Party, under our rule, has done a fantastic job of developing the economy. We're up to 176 factories now, including 12 dockyards, which means we have the beginnings of a Brazilian Navy that we are creating right now. We are up to 41 ships, I think, which is pretty nice. I want to get that well over 100, and we will also seek to build a carrier at some point in the future. But our naval tech is still very far behind. Obviously, the position of the PT Party will always be for the advancement of the Brazilian worker. The working class in Brazil will always be our number one priority, but with our newfound wealth and prosperity does come our obligation to uphold international security in the international security order, right? So it's important that despite the fact that we are a uh, primarily socialist faction, that we do maintain a strong navy so we can exercise power projection over all the Americas, anywhere else we need to, right? So that's important. Uh, Vossa Excelência, uh, it's me, in Argentina. Ah, uh, Mr. Larua, welcome to Brasilia. Welcome, so, welcome. Uh, I heard you talk to African Union. I'd like to know how, how did it go? It went very well. Um, we, we expressed our concern, obviously, with the situation in Somalia and the creation of the Islamic State there. If it's an internal security matter, I'm happy to let them deal with it. But obviously, that government will need to be overthrown. Uh, whether it's diplomatically yeah. or militarily, and if they're not willing to do it, we we will. So along with say the USA. So. So Argentina should be up to arms right now and alert. I'd say yeah, definitely put your military in high alert. Our our, our own navy is training, our own military is prepared. I'm hoping right. that uh, the African Union makes an internal matter and deals with it themselves. But. Yes. Yeah. The other issue that we we need to actually discuss, uh, Mr. Larua, is the Peruvian situation. There is yeah, currently um, a nationalist government in charge there, which uh, we have kind of allowed to exist for quite a while. But I think we do need to start considering how to potentially deal with that situation. Having a nationalist in our own backyard is not something that looks really good upon the UNISL. We still have elections. I mean, it would be a bit uh, uh, bad of our part. I mean, you're still the democratic and still have elections. They do. I'm, I'm not advocating for interference. I'm simply saying we have to keep our eye on it and perhaps do our best to uh, support the Democratic faction, which hopefully can become yes, elected. I understand. It's just, uh, I, I don't think we should, um, how do I say this, not in a correct way, you know? We should not uh, judge their um, ideologies so quickly. I understand what you're saying, but I'm simply worried about the options for a democratic government there. And although they had no suspended elections, nationalist governments obviously do have a propensity towards that. You know, it, I as, it, as a Brazilian, I remember not so long ago when nationalist governments in our own country took away democratic rights of our citizens. Indeed. Indeed. So it's important that we commit ourselves to making sure that free elections do exist in South America. Unisol is an attempt to legitimize South America as a political and economic entity. And we yes. cannot do that if we allow for non-democratic tendencies in our own backyard. So I'm just simply saying we keep a very close eye almost uh, Fujimora's government, and we make sure that they do not uh, go into darker times. All right then, all right then. Well, Argentina had a, had a similar uh, way of uh, uh, government a dictatorship back in the 70s, as you know. Yes. So we both know, I guess, how uh, these things tend to go. Our continent has a long history of authoritarian rule, and it is the duty of you and me, our fellow Unicell members, and a commitment of the modern South American faction to ensure that that is left in our history and that we move on yeah. to a future defined by doing the best for our own citizens and promoting the values of the working class. I totally agree with you. Nothing, nothing but the best for us. We shall prevail. Absolutely. We will indeed. One thing I'm worried about is I sometimes I feel like we're putting um, our hands and where we're supposed to sometimes. In what regard, Just... Mr. LaRue, speak plainly. I'm sorry, um, I was saying is I'm worried about us putting our hands and where we're not supposed to. I, I, so you mean worry. outside of South America or do you mean with Peru? Outside of South America. Understandable. I mean, South America is something we're, we're going to definitely involve on ourselves uh -huh. every day. 
but uh, internationally, you know, I feel like we're putting our hands somewhere where we're not supposed to. I mean, Do, are you referring to uh, uh, Afghanistan, Somalia, kind of thing, or what are you referring to? No, no, I'm talking about uh, generally. I mean, I saw mm -hmm. your diplomatic action with a lot of countries, and I'm worried that if there's something going. on, I'm worried that we're expressing our uh, putting our influence over it and what's we're, what we're supposed to. You know, I hope you understand. What they we're overextending. Yes, we're overextending what we can. You know. I understand, but I, I think, would you not agree that in order to legitimize ourselves as a continent which has modern economies and political and economic power, that we would involve ourselves with the ongoing situations throughout the world which all the other major powers involve themselves? I mean, do you disagree with that? No, obviously I don't disagree with that, but mm -hmm. we could get the United States, for example. They have a bad reputation of... You know, putting some hands, hands on what I'm supposed to. You know? uh, I understand. And I feel like we can we can pass the same message if we, you know, keep doing this. So you're saying that we should pull out a little bit from a foreign policy involvement for a little while? Not 100 percent, but mm -hmm. if anything concerns us, you know, we should. All right. How about like, this? Maybe... After the Somalian situation is dealt with, we we take a while to just kind of pull back and focus more on domestic issues for a while. I agree with that. I feel like yeah. it's because I feel like our reputation, sometimes we can involve in something where it's not totally none of our business and, you know, we might suffer consequences from it. That's fair. That's fair. All right. In that I case, after Somalia is dealt with, uh, Brazil will take a, take more of a relaxed role in that regard. Well, we do have to focus will... more internally, so absolutely. Argentina respects the decision that, that Brazil will be taking. And we respect our, our fellow Unisol's members on our foreign policy, and we are committed to working alongside Argentina. And if you have any other problems with the political actions, foreign or domestic of Brazil, just let us know, and we will make sure to uh, change course. Of course, lots of settings yet. So it's a, always a pleasure talking to you, by the way. You as well, Mr. Leroux. You as well. Oh, and then have a nice day, Vossa Excelência. Absolutely. Uh, the United Nations acknowledges the representative from South Africa. Hello, members of the international community. Uh, I speak on behalf of the African Union and not on South, or South Africa today. Uh, the African Union has been approached by uh, delegates of the Western powers, specifically Brazil and the United States, with concern over over the state-sponsored terrorism of uh, Islamic. Uh, what are they called now? Uh, the Islamic State of Somalia. Uh, Somalia is as currently or has been in uh, multiple civil wars uh, over the past few years. And this turmoil has given uh, given rise to uh, members of the Al Shabaab regime, and they have uh, taken over key uh, points uh, of the city's infrastructure. Uh, the African Union is spearheading a intervention campaign uh, led by Egypt to um, to combat this uh, this terrorist organization in Somalia. Uh, Egypt, as well as other African mem or, uh, Union members, require uh, military equipment, specifically modern military equipment. Um, to uh, protect uh, troops on the ground, uh, any uh, any military aid given to uh, given to us through Egypt will be much appreciated. Uh, that is my time. Thank you. The United, Na the United Nations acknowledges the member from the United States. Greetings, uh, delegates from the United Nations. So, I cannot tell you everything that we know, uh, but what I can share with you, uh, combined with what all of us have learned over the years, is deeply troubling. Uh, Iraq's behavior demonstrates that Saddam Hussein and his regime has made no effort whatsoever to disarm as required by the international community. It shows that Saddam, uh, Saddam's regime is concealing his attempts to produce more weapons of mass destruction and uh, we shouldn't be surprised by this. Terrorism has been a tool used by Saddam for decades. Uh, Saddam has supported terrorism regimes uh, longer than most uh, terrorism regimes have existed, the current ones. And so... Saddam uh, has also supported multiple genocides against subsections of his population. And with his track record, uh, the Iraqi denials of possessing nuclear weapons goes alongside denying their support of terrorist regimes and of their numerous genocides. Um, so I thank you for your patience and listening to my speech. The United Nations acknowledges the representative from Libya. Dear members, we find it really strange that Iraq is being targeted following the 9-11 terrorist attacks, whereas Saudi Arabia 
the first supplier of Salafist terrorism and Wahhabism propaganda in the world, haven't been subjected to any international sanctions whatsoever. The fight against world, the fight for world destabilization must start here, not in Iraq. If we want to fight against destabilization, we must, it must be by UN action, an investigation in Iraq, for example, not a single action by America. Thank you. The United Nations acknowledges the representative from France. Uh, thank you, General Secretary. Uh, the great nation of France addresses fellow world leaders regarding the betterment of economic cooperation, uh, not only between certain countries, but between entire blocs. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Africa and South America are rising powers and stars in this world, um, and France would like to lead the charge on uh, multiple investment opportunities uh, that can benefit everyone uh, in the world. Uh, we would like to extend um, everything we have done considering economic cooperation with the African Union, uh, with Brazil and other members in South America and with Russia. And we would like to continue this behavior uh, with all nations of the world. Furthermore, we just want to uh, say that the security of Europe is in France's utmost interest, and any infringement on this will be met uh, with severe consequences. Uh, the protection of Europe uh, must be in the interest of European nations. Uh, thank you, everyone. And lastly, the United Nations acknowledges the member from Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, let it not be said that Brazil lacks in its commitment to the world. To the men and women who work tirelessly in farms, factories, and all manner of labor across this large and connected world of ours. We are now a nation that has overcome a dark past for any or the will of the people who hold up this house of cards is not paramount is to be questioned. I am not a man born to privilege, to excess, or to power, nor did I want these things, but it falls on those who are called to represent those who do not. I take my role with as much zeal as that of respect, not just for those who rep I represent, but also for the other working class men and women all in all corners of the world. It is we who build and so we who should reap. It is the position of my government and my nation that we will no longer pander to nations who seek exploitation, who take but never give in return. It is a new dawn for Brazilian international relations and for foreign policy. Cardoza and his brand of neoliberalism is gone, and although many thought it was small consolidation, we know better. It is nothing but a rebranding of colonialism and imperialism, a wolf in sheep's clothing, like what so many other governments and nations offer. We are the sleeping giant of the Americas, and when we wake, the world will tremble as the power of our workers across the planet echo the call of freedom. Brazil announces an economic commitment for its fellows in the Americas and elsewhere around the world. As we grow in economic utility, it shall be used to raise our fellows like a great tide. Thank you. <laughs>